Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Warrior, a Magic the Gathering YouTube series. I am Spencer, host of Constructed Criticism and Limit Time Only, two podcasts about getting better at Magic the Gathering. Uh, man, I have been super busy lately. Uh, really excited to talk to you guys. So this week, we're going to do another part of our How to Improve at Magic uh, part of that series. This week, we're going to talk about playing more. So these are short videos, kind of, you know, five, ten minutes, where we kind of just talk about different things that you can do to improve your game in Magic the Gathering. This week, I want to talk about the thing that probably every pro says when you ask them how to improve in Magic. They all say, oh, play more Magic. It's real easy. You just do that and you get better. And it's true, but it's, uh, it's something that it's like, well, how much is more? What if I'm only playing, you know, two hours a week? Well, yeah, I play more than that. That's kind of what we want to talk about today. So why does every pro say that? Well, the truth is, is because at the end of the day, that's going to be get you the most app mileage out of your time just by playing. The more you play, um, you know, the way to think about it is it gives you more opportunities to learn than other things. Even though you're looking for ways to improve in other ways by watching YouTube videos like this, you know, going out listening to podcasts, reading articles, all those things, they do help you improve, but they don't get the same mileage out of them that you would get from doing something like just playing. So what are some of the benefits? So one of the main things is you learn interaction. So you learn how cards work in the game itself, learn what the cards are doing inside of each format, and that's something that you'd learn a lot easier through playing rather than just reading articles. Even though you can read an article and it can tell you the thing that you're wanting to learn, um, learning you can see things differently with your own eyes. So um, you also get to know the format a lot better. Um, you know, whether it's standard, modern, legacy, vintage, popper, whatever the format is, you're going to learn more about it just from having those interactions in in-game play. Uh, you know, people all the time talk about in drafts how like you have to get a feel for what's going on in that respective format, and that's true, and that happens through repetition. Um, and at the end of the day, it also just takes a lot off of your plate when you're going to an event and you already have played a thousand games, like or a hundred games, or however many you were able to play. The more of those games that you got in beforehand, really the 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 better prepared you're going to be for the event coming up. So it really takes a lot off of your plate in the real event as you've had these reps already put in. So the other thing to think about when we say play more Magic is play more formats. You know, I hear all the time people talk about how they're just a standard player, or they're just a modern player, or they're just a drafter. You know, those things are great, but you don't have to be that. You know, Magic is enjoyed in lots of different ways. You can play Popper, you can draft, you can cube, you can play standard, you can play modern, you can play vintage, you can play legacy. You know, all of these things are things that are available to you and you can play Commander, like there's tons of different ways to play Magic, and in doing that, when you play more, weirdly, sometimes you get better at different things. I talked about on our podcast on Constructive Criticism a few weeks ago, how I love playing the Kiln Fiend deck in Popper, because it gives me an avenue of competitive play that I don't usually play in Standard and in, in Modern, you know, in the case it's like, oh yeah, because it's like playing the Infect deck, which is a deck that I don't typically play. But yeah, it's kind of similar to that. It's it's in that same vein of like, you know, figuring out how to get those games in, get those game wins, and like unlocking that part of my brain. And it's been pretty good for me. And it's something that I would dec definitely recommend to other people is trying different formats out. Play as many different types of magic as you can. Think about all the times where people talk about how much they love cube. Great magic players love cube. So if cube's not too dorky or too relaxed for, you know, Owen Turtenwald, Paul Vitor, and LSV, it's probably not too relaxed for you, and you might want to go give it a try. So the other, the other thing to think about when you were playing more Magic is, oh, I don't have time, I don't have somebody to play with, you know, there's lots of avenues to play Magic. You can play with your friends, just, you know, go into your house, you know, write out some playtesting cards, you don't even have to own the cards, and just play Magic that way. You know, it takes some memorization. You have to remember what the cards do and things like that. But it's a great way to get in reps of magic. So never be too proud to just go do that. All the I do that all the time with my friends. We go to uh, Matt and Casey weekly, go to Denny's or IHOP uh, with some when, some cards that they've written on and just play magic. So uh, local events, don't like you can find local events to you by going to locator.wizards.com and just finding the closest place that hosts magic tournaments. And you can go do some drafts. Uh, get some reps in that way. Go out, meet people. Magic is a game to be played with others, so go out and do it. Um, other things that you can do are Skype sessions, so you can Skype with people. Let's say that you can't have somebody in the same room as you, Skype with them and play Magic. That's definitely within the realm of possibilities. 
Uh, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, you just need you and a friend. Um, yeah, Skype is a great tool for that. The other thing that you can do is check out Magic the Gathering online if you've never seen it before. You just go to wizards.com, type in MTGO download, go download the game. It's free to download. You do have to purchase the cards, but at the end of the day, the cards are cheaper on Moto. You can get in reps at any time of the day. They have leagues on Moto. If you haven't played in a league before, basically it's just like matches of magic that you're in a queue and then you just play people and you get prizes. It's a great way to build up your collection. And it's pretty easy once you have an initial investment into Moto, if you start winning, to just win more and more product and go what we call infinite. Um, so those are all great ways to play the game that we love without, you know, without having to think about it too hard. I mean, the, the excuse that, like, you can't play Magic is maybe you're her dad, maybe you have kids, maybe you have other things in your plate, but there's so many other ways to play that if you want to improve, you know, taking a couple hours of your week to do a draft on MTGO might just put you over the edge, might put you over the hump that you're looking to get over. So at the end of the day, the thing you will find is that it's easier the brain has an easier time with magic when you play more of it it kind of unlocks that part of the brain that you're not using as often so when you play more the brain has an easier trend time transitioning into magic mode if that makes sense that way it doesn't take you like to get into a tournament oftentimes my friends and i will complain about uh, you know, starting out 4-0 at a PPTQ and then having draw draw or 5-0 and then having to draw draw um, and you're like, oh, why would you complain about that? You get a two-hour break. But at the same time when you think about it, you're also losing those two hours that your brain was engaged into magic mode and sometimes it can be kind of hard to get back into that while going into top 8 and it can make it harder to close. The same thing can be true just about like playing less magic like getting into that magic mindset is something that can be hard for some people so if you play a lot of it it can become a lot easier for you the other thing that i i want to stress before we go is when players say play more magic one of the main things to think about is that you're gaining opportunities to improve you're you're gaining think about it you're putting yourself in front of magic you're gaining more opportunities to learn about magic because you're presenting yourself with them uh, each time that you sit down and play Magic, Magic should be treated as an opportunity to learn. So the more Magic you play, the more opportunities you have to learn about the game. And that's why it's so important to play more. Because um, at the end of the day, the more opportunities that you give yourself to... It's, if it's a numbers game, right? If the more opportunities you give yourself to learn, the more you'll learn. Uh, if, you're, if you have the right mindset in doing it. So at the end of the day, I think that like those are the benefits to trying to play more Magic. And it's just something that we all have to decide and allocate time for ourselves. But I definitely think playing more magic is going to be more helpful for you. It's as simple as that. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget that you can support these videos by going to patreon.com slash ccmtg and becoming a patron of the website. Um, really appreciate all the support that we get and we look forward to speaking with you guys every week on the podcast, on stuff like this, through deck techs, through testing videos. Thank you everybody and have a wonderful week.